So last time we showed the following. We showed that this recurrence relation has a constant runtime. So t of 1 equals c, right? So this is a recurrence relation. It's a complete, you know, well-posed recurrence relation. We showed that this gives rise to a, to a constant time, uh, constant time characteristic. Okay. So if you ever run into an algorithm that has this recurrence relation, now you know, whatever that c is, no matter what that c is, it's a constant time algorithm. So now let's change this just a little bit. Let's, let's add just a tiny bit of, of nuance and see what that changes. So let's check out the following. So instead of the, the, the first recurrence relation we analyzed, let's analyze this one. T of n over 2 plus c. And I'll call that c1 so that I can anchor this thing at c2, uh, not t. C2, like this. So here's a new recurrence relation. Right? So this, we, we want to ask, this gives us T of n big theta of, of what? Right? What's the effect of adding a tiny constant here? Basically, what does this do? Right? And so now let's, let's, let's walk away from our old recurrence relation and just focus on the new one and think about what kind of algorithm this is describing. Well, this is describing an algorithm like binary search. Okay, so, so my, my, my key example here is binary search. So if you're not familiar with binary search, go look it up, it's a classic algorithm. Um, but the way binary search works is you give it an, an array of size n, and then it only looks at half of that array, right? It, it essentially recurses on half of that array and it takes a constant amount of time to figure out which half of the array it needs to, to, to recurse on. Okay, so it cuts the input in half every time it recurses, but it needs to spend a little bit of effort to figure out you know, how to cut it in half, right? Figure out whether to go up or down, basically, okay? So a little bit of time required, a little bit of overhead required to, to actually figure out how to do the split. All right, so let's let's use our program and solve this thing. And we're going to we're going to move a little bit faster this time because a lot of the techniques look very very similar to what they were before. So, t of n equals t of n over 2 plus c1. And then I'll give myself my scratch space and up here I'll write t of x equals t of x over 2 plus c1. Okay? So, what do I need to know? I need to know what is an expression for t of n over 2. So let's let x equal n over 2 and solve. n over 2 equal, sorry, that's not x, it's 2. So this is t of n over 4 plus c1. And now I'll substitute that back up, right? So substitute that back. And I get what? I get t of n over 4 plus c1 plus c1. So it's worth keeping track of where things came from. And so basically this came from t of n over 2. So what is this saying? It says that after one recursive call, sorry, after two recursive calls, we our input has now been cut into a quarter of its original size. That's what that n over 4 means. And we've had to do the overhead related to cutting the input in half twice. Right, so we have now two of these overhead terms that have accumulated to our, to our total. Okay, so let's continue. So now, now we need an expression for t of n over 4. So how will we do that? We'll let x equal n over 4. And we'll say t of n over 4 equals t of n over 8 because it's cutting in half every time. t of n over 8 plus c1. Okay, so now we've got another overhead. You know, every time we recurse, we'll always get another overhead, clearly, and we'll cut the input in half, and so then we can substitute that back in, and we end up with t of n over 8 plus c1 plus c1 plus c1. Okay, so now I'm writing out the c1s as a sum like this, just so that we can keep really careful track of how many there are. And with some of the future recurrences that we do, that'll be really important. It'll be, it'll be very helpful to see them added up 
individually rather than to see them all, all accumulated. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, we have the denominator of the, you know, or the, the number that we're dividing n by, we're having that increasing, you know, as a power of two every time. And every time we increase the power of two, we add another constant term. So let me just show, let me just write you out the expression, the, the pattern that we have here. So this is, you know, two, four, eight is clearly two to the k. So this is t of n over two to the k. And when k was one up in the first line, we had one constant term, one overhead term. When k was two in the second line, we had two overhead terms. When k was three, we had three overhead terms. So then what do we have? Well, we have k overhead terms. So then this is plus k times c1. Okay, so there's our pattern. So now what's our, what's our anchoring step gonna look like? Well, the anchor will look like this. The anchor will look like t of n over 2 to the k needs to equal t of 1, right? That is n over 2 to the k equals 1. And I'm going to draw that line shorter, right? So that is uh, n equals 2 to the k, right? Which is to say n over 2 to the k equals 1. Um, and so n over 2 to the k is there, and I'm just going to leave it there for now to see what I, what I need to do with it. Okay. So now let me substitute that back in here. So now I'll substitute, substitute, and I have t of n equals t of n over, uh, let me write that as t of uh, 2 to the k over 2 to the k. Well, you know, it's actually cleaner to write n over n n over n. So I replaced the 2 to the k with n um, plus, uh, let's see, plus k times c1. Right, so I know that t of n over n is just, that's t over t of 1. So that's c2 plus k times c1. So now what is k? Right, I need to get rid of this k uh, and I can get rid of it using this. So recall in the last lecture, I went through that lengthy derivation of k and log and exponential uh, that I didn't end up needing. But in this one, I do, right? So in this one, it's very helpful if I rewrite this as k equals log base two of n. All right, so now I have an expression for k that I can plug in down here. So this equals c2 plus c1 log base two of n. And there's, there's my expression. There's the full expression. So what this means is that I only need to make logarithmically many recursive calls. And for each one of those calls, I, I accrue some overhead, right? So essentially in the end, I only need to do logarithmically much work, if you will, right? And so what is, what is this? Well, this is big theta of log n. Okay, because the, the constant term, you know, the constant term goes away, that constant term gets dropped, and all I'm left with is log n. So t of n is, is big theta of log n. So what did we get? Let's, let's, let's just make sure that this is, that, that we can recap this and be clear. We had the following. We had if t of n is equal to t of n over 2 plus c1, and t of 1 is equal to c2, we said this recurrence relation gives rise to a theta of log n growth. So I want to address one subtlety before I move on. So here's my subtlety. I said, so let me call this guy t, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna introduce another one called t1. So t1 is defined in the following way. t1 of n equals t1 of n over two without the constant overhead term. And then t1 of one equals, we'll call it c3. So here's another recurrence relation that gives rise to a constant time complexity. Nope, not log, sorry. This is, this is constant time, right? This is big theta of one. All right, so there's a potential problem, not, not a problem, a potential pitfall here that you need, to, you need to watch out for very carefully. 
So here's, here's, here's the challenge, is what we have is T1 is defined in the following way, and T is defined in this following way. And it can be possible to think of it in like this. So I'm gonna write don't do this, just so it's clear, but, but here's the potential pitfall. So, so don't do this. It feels like you should be able to write t of n, right, as in this t of n equals t1 of n over 2 plus c1. And we already know that t1 of n is constant time, right, expresses a constant runtime plus c1. And it would then look like this is big theta of 1, right? And it's worth recognizing that the reason this is false, right, and, and we know it's false, we just did the analysis and we discovered that actually t, t of n is a logarithmic complexity, right, it's not a constant complexity. Uh, the reason that this, all, this approach that I've just drawn in red is false is because t1 is not itself constant time. It's defined in a recursive way, and t is only logarithmic because it's defined in this recursive way, right? So, so t, essentially, the issue is t uh, of n over 2 is not the same thing, right? It is, it is a different object than t1 of n over 2, right? They do not refer to the same thing. So you have to be careful if you're mixing and matching recurrence relations, um, that as soon as you start mixing and matching, you have to know that you, you need to go back and redo any analysis that you've already done because, because the mix and match does not work.